Good evening and welcome to Brass Roots Leather. This is how to thread your machine part two. In response to some of the comments that the threading process was cut off previously, I'm gonna go through this very quickly. So this is going to be a short video. First of all, you'll wanna have three in one machine oil. You'll wanna apply a drop of oil in the top rocker bar, in the front and the back. It may be good to add a tiny bit to the back of this one. There's a hole in the back of the top here because this is the part where it moves up and down. And as it turns, you'll see that there's friction here. Try to keep away from any of the places that you have your thread going so you don't get oil into this part. But you can add a drop in this hole to allow for the movement of the bobbin winder. As you can see here, I've placed my handle at about 11 o'clock. This position has the needle in the up position and the bobbin in the load position. If you look at some of the other videos or look online, you'll find a way of using this bobbin winder to wind your thread. Right here, you'll see that I've put the bobbin in. I've used my Dremel to cut a slot so I can see the thread. Also helps me attach it here. I put the thread through the first of the two holes and then I move the leaf spring up to give it a little bit of tension so that if I pull gently, I feel that there's a bit of drag. This is where you'll create your tension for the bottom thread. With your handle at the 11 o'clock mark, you'll be able to drop your bobbin in and your thread should come out in this slot. If by chance when you buy the machine, this slot seems very thin, you may want to file that down. This is a leaf spring type of attachment, so you'll want to lift it up a little bit and put it down. This should end up being pretty flat, and this thread screw should be pretty flat down. If it's not, you may need to sand it. If you need to lift it up, you may use a screwdriver. After a few times, it'll come out pretty easily. Some people have changed this opening for thicker needles, but for now I'm using the needles that came with it. We refer to the first video to know about those needles, and I will later uh, add to the comments at the bottom a link to the Chinese Leather Patcher Facebook page so that you can see what it's all about. So this is the hand crank. This is the lever that operates the needle, gets it to go up and down. The handle on the back is the one that will move the foot forward and back. The bar at the bottom is what turns the bobbin so it catches. This is your tension spring. I've noted that some of the machines now come with two. Uh, from what I've heard of other folks, if you have thin thread fishing line, it might be good to use both of them. Honestly, you only need one. It doesn't have to be super tight, just enough so that when you pull, it's tight and it doesn't slide out through. There's also a tension spring here and the lengthening screw here, which will make your stitches longer or shorter, is in the back of this. This is where you're gonna put your thread. In this case, I'm gonna be using a thread that is upholstery thread. It's nylon for buttons. And I'm gonna be using this to then sew a couple pieces of scrap leather for this demonstration. I place it here, make sure that the teeth that grabs the thread is at the bottom. If you ever get one of these, you'll see that there's like a tooth that holds your thread in place. Place that down so it's out of your way. You want a little bit of thread. You go through the open hole at the top here, which is the second one, not where the axle is. You'll want to go underneath the tension spring. So it goes in and around. Now it's tight in the tension spring and now it's hard to pull. So usually I'll need to make sure that I'm not in a knot here. That's what catches sometimes. There we go. And now we're gonna go underneath the spring hole that's down here. That's then gonna transfer your thread behind. And to thread your needle, you may want to go back up to your 11 position so you can see the one that's up at the top here. 
this one here, a little bit out of frame, you'll go from the front to the back of it. And now here's where the fun comes into play. So after you've got a good amount of threading, you're going to want to get that thread to go down the rod where the needle comes out. So I have a piece of copper and I've grooved the tip of it so that it has a V in it. I can then use it kind of like a stitching needle to then push this down the hole. And a little bit like a musket rifle, if I do it right. Once you get it down there, the needle back up. You'll then see the thread down at the bottom. I keep this attached to a little slot behind my machine. I'm pull. And then I'm going to go from the left to the right in order to thread it through the needle. The needle has a bit of a groove and you want to get your deep thread through there. All right, so once you get it from the left to the right side of the thread, you should be able to get your presser foot up and then get your needle down. And now in order to get your under thread to come out, you'll want to turn it clockwise and you'll go down once. Hold on to this thread and as it goes down one full rotation, you'll be able to pull and you'll see that your bottom thread comes out. So now here you have your machine properly threaded and you're ready to sell. And now to prove that this works, once you have it there, lift up your uh, needle. I sometimes just hold it in place or with the back of my hand. If I don't have something to hold it with, get your presser feet aligned. Some people have come up with a contraption to keep this at the distance. It might be good to 3D print a piece that holds this in the, in the space so that you can keep your stretch, your stitch edge. Or uh, other folks have used a band with a screw attachment to keep it in place. Once you have that there, you should then be able to get your sewing. If you find that your stitches are too short, then you'll need to, once your needle goes in the mid position, you'll see that here there's a gap between the screw you can then raise the screw and as you raise it up the distance is shortened but it also then allows for the stitches to be closer so if you go the other way the more the arm travels the further your stitches are going to be takes to get this to go. Now this is two four ounce pieces of leather. You usually can't pull away so it's recommended you relax, you pull a little bit of string, and you come out before you then pull away. If you find that your tension is off, that's where sometimes you have to give a little bit more tension here. Right now I've got both of my threads going in and in and it's not laying on the surface. So I'm getting a good stitch on both sides. So there is how to thread this machine. Go in, second hole closest to the needle, go down and around, in between the springs, under, behind the bar, to the needle, then go inside the carrier, 
this rod that then goes to the side of the needle. Your thread's going to come out the side and you're going to thread it from left to right. Your presser foot will then go down, one full rotation, that'll pull it straight up. 